Recall that we said that specifying the PLSM model consists of two steps or stages. The first stage is the structural model specification, and we just discussed that in the first two videos. The second stage or step is the measurement model specification, and we're going to discuss that now. And in fact, every PLSM model actually consists of two models. You have the so-called inner model the structural model, which really is the focus of the study and is usually tied to the theory that you're testing. The inner model, the blue circles, these latent constructs, consists of variables in your theory and what you're trying to achieve is you want to estimate the relationships along these paths between and among each of these latent constructs. That's the inner structural model that we just talked about. But because each one of these latent constructs are not directly observable, we have a second model, a so-called measurement model, which consists of each set of relationships between a latent construct and the actual measurement items that are used to assess the level or the value for each latent construct. So in this model, we actually have four separate measurement models. I believe sometimes the set of items and the relationships for any one construct, I believe sometimes they're called a block. Now note something about these four sets of measurement models. The entire outer rim is the measurement model, but each specific latent construct has its own set of items and thus its own measurement model or block as I sometimes call it. Measurement models can be multi-item or they can be single item. Furthermore, measurement models can be either reflective, where the arrows go from the latent construct to each measurement item, or they can be formative, where the arrows go the other way. Now, in Smart PLS, each measurement model will by default be indicated, shown as a reflective block, a reflective set of items. You can reverse that by clicking on a latent construct and just saying switch between formative and, re and reflective. So now we see that comp is modeled from a measurement point of view as a, a formative block, a formative model. We'll talk more about the differences between reflective and formative models later. They are not arbitrary. You cannot simply show the arrows or the relationships, each one of these measurement model paths really reflects the relationship between each measurement item and the latent construct. You can't just flip them back and forth arbitrarily. Okay, so again, in this model, our corporate reputation model, we have three multi-item reflective models or constructs, and we have one single item construct, CUSA. Note that in the case of a single item construct, there is no need to model it as either reflective or formative. In fact, it makes no difference. If you have only a single measurement item for a latent construct, the statistical or mathematical underpinnings of the PLS algorithm will yield the exact same estimates for that item, regardless of whether you try to model it as reflective or formative. In the case of a single item only, it doesn't matter. However, it does matter when you have more than one measurement item for any latent construct. So for now, we note that you can have multi-items or single item constructs, and we note that they can be, the multi-item constructs can be modeled either as reflective constructs or as formative constructs. 